Project Plus is a newly released community mod of Project M. This mod rebalances characters, adds new features and modes, and a whole lot more. So you might be wondering, how do I try it out? I'm Shikaka3. And I'm Che. And together, we're going to explain the most popular methods for installing Project Plus. The four methods are Hackless, Homebrew, USB Loading, and Dolphin. If you're only interested in a certain method, skip ahead in the video to the section that's relevant to you. For each Wii method, you'll need an NTSCU copy of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and if you are playing on a Wii, you'll need an SD card. P Plus only works with the NTSCU release of Brawl, however you can run Project Plus on other console versions using USB loading. Keep in mind that for all of the Wii guides, we will assume you are using a Wii with the latest 4.3 firmware, so if it's not, be sure to update your Wii to the correct version. Alright, first up is Hackless. The Hackless method of loading Product Plus is the simplest way of loading Brawl mods and requires no additional hacking or modifications of the Wii you want to play on. Over the years, it's become the classic method of loading Product M, and all you need is a 2GB SD card. Keep in mind that you can't use SDHC or SDXC cards when using this method, and that the SD card can't be in the locked position. The way this method works is that it uses an exploit in Brawl's stage builder to load mods, but because it's working within the confines of Brawl, it has limitations. You won't be able to have any custom stages while using the hackless method, and you are limited to one mod at a time using this method. To load Product Plus using the hackless setup, first you need to download Product Plus Lite for a 2GB SD card from ProductPlusGame.com. While the game is downloading, you can make sure to format your SD card with FAT32 and 16KB allocation size. Once the download is complete, extract files and place them onto the root of your SD card. Then you can start your Wii and boot up Brawl. Once you're in Brawl, navigate to the Stage Builder, delete all of your custom stages, including the three custom stages that are included with the new save of Brawl. After that, insert your SD card and the P Plus launcher will boot. Now, every time you want to load P+, just boot up Brawl and navigate to the Stage Builder. The next method is Homebrew. Now this method is very useful for people who have SD cards larger than 2GB. This method also has the added benefits of not requiring a Wiimote as well. If you Homebrew, you can set your Wii to boot straight into the Homebrew channel with the Preloader, bypassing the need for a Wiimote at all. Not only that, but you can also have multiple mods on one SD card using the homebrew method. Though this method is a little bit longer to set up initially, it's both faster and more flexible in the long run. It still has the limitation of not being able to use SDXC cards, but that's well worth the added benefits for using homebrew channel. If you already have the homebrew channel on your Wii, you can skip the next part of the guide. Otherwise, the next part of the guide will simply show you how to homebrew your Wii. It's a relatively simple process and should only take around 5 minutes to do. There are many ways of getting the homebrew channel on a Wii. In this tutorial, I'll explain the two best ways, Letterbomb and STR2 Hacks. STR2 Hacks is an exploit for the EULA app on the Wii that doesn't require an SD card, which is its main advantage. STR2 Hacks requires a Wii with an internet connection to work. On the other hand, Letterbomb uses an exploit in the Wii message board system to execute a homebrew application from an external SD card, meaning that you'll have to have one in order to homebrew your Wii this way. SDR2 Hacks is a much easier process than Letterbomb, but both exploits require your Wii to be on System Menu 4.3. We'll go over Letterbomb first. To set up Letterbomb, first you have to go to pleasehackme.com. Select your Wii's region, and if you don't know what region format your Wii is, you can check in your Wii settings. Now, you need your Wii's MAC address, and to get the MAC address, you need to go to Wii Options, Wii Settings, Internet, and then Console Information. From there, you can copy the MAC address onto the website, and make sure to leave the option that says, Bundle the HackMe Installer for me, checked. Complete the CAPTCHA and cut the red or blue wire, it doesn't matter which one. Once it's downloaded, find the location it's saved to. Then extract the zip and copy the contents onto the root of your SD card. Now put your SD card into the Wii. Go back to the Wii menu and navigate to the Wii message board. What you're looking for is the letter bomb. It's a red envelope with a bomb in it. You'll be able to find it on the day before the date your computer was displaying when you created the file originally. 
Once you've installed the Homebrew channel, you'll see it on your Wii menu. All you have to do is navigate to this channel and you'll be able to see Homebrew apps like Project Plus and run them. To set up STR2 hacks, first go to the Wii settings under Internet. Then select connection settings and choose your currently active connection. From there, select change settings and scroll to the left or right until you get auto obtain DNS. From there, change that option to no and then select advanced settings. Change both DNS addresses to match what's shown on the screen here. Select confirm, then save, and you will be told that you need to run a connection test. Don't worry if your connection test takes a long time. Ours took just under 2 minutes. Select No to the system update prompt if your Wii is already on version 4.3. If the connection test doesn't work, try running it one more time and if it still fails, make sure that you have a working internet connection in the first place. Back out to the internet panel and choose User Agreements. Then select Yes to the question about Wii Shop Channel and Wii Connect 24. From there, you'll be taken to a screen telling you to review the user agreements for the Wii. Select Next. If you see a pony on the screen telling you to wait, then you have done everything correctly. The exploit takes just about 1 to 2 minutes, and if it takes longer than 2 minutes, it probably failed. Just turn off your Wii and go to the user agreements again. From there, the exploit will run the HackMe installer. Once Homebrew is installed, you'll be able to put as many Brawl mods as you can fit on an SD card just as simply as you set up the hackless method in the first place. First, download Project Plus for offline slash Wii from productplusgame.com. Then, while the game is downloading, make sure to format your SD card with FAT32 and 32 kilobyte allocation size to ensure that the Wii can properly read files from the SD card. Once the download is complete, extract the files and place them onto the root of your SD card. From there, simply boot up your Wii and go to the Homebrew channel, then insert your SD card, and from there you'll be able to launch Product Plus. USB loading is the most advanced technique for loading Brawl mods. You must have a homebrewed Wii, and you need a legally obtained ISO from your copy of Brawl. But when it's done, you'll be able to play Product Plus even if your disc reader or disc breaks, which happens to many Wiis these days. To use this, you'll need an SD card or an SDHC card, and a USB at least 8GB in size to hold your Brawl ISO. You are also going to need some prerequisite downloads, which you can find on this Google document that we've linked in the description. Once you have all of the prerequisites downloaded, we can start the installation process. First, you should check if your Wii has a working internet connection. If you do, when it comes time to run the CIOS installer, your Wii will automatically grab the base iOS it needs. You can skip ahead if your Wii is already connected to the internet. If you can't get your Wii to connect to the internet, then you'll have to use NUS Downloader to get the base iOS for the CIOS installer. For that, you'll need to start up NUS download. Then, make sure Pack WAD is selected, navigate to V5918, and then press Start NUS Download. Now that you've downloaded the base iOS, open up the folder where you put the NUS Downloader, and you will then see a folder named Titles. These are where your WAD files are located. Copy the WAD file to the root of the SD card and format the USB drive with FAT32 and 32 kilobyte allocation size. From here, create a WBFS folder on the root of your USB drive. Extract the WBFS file and drag the ISO onto the WBFS file executable. It will create a folder next to the ISO with your converted files in a folder. Move the folder created by the WBFS tool onto the WBFS directory inside of your USB drive. Once it finishes transferring, eject your USB drive and plug it into the USB port closest to the edge of your Wii. Now we're going to install the preloader app. Open up your preloader zip file. Go into the Apps folder and take the contents and put them into the Apps folder on the SD card that you're going to use for Project Plus. Then, put hacks-hash.any inside of the newly formed preloader folder on your SD card. After this, we're going to do basically the same thing with our CIOS installer. Open up the zip file, take the D2X CIOS installer folder and drag it onto the Apps folder of your SD card. Now, take the D2X V8 final zip file on your computer, extract it, 
and put the contents of the folder that it creates inside of your newly created CIOS installer folder on your SD card. Now that you have all of the files ready, we're going to install the custom iOS. Eject the SD card and insert it onto your Wii. Go to the Homebrew channel. Open the app D2X CIOS Installer, read the dialog, and then press any button to continue. To navigate the menus, you're going to have to use the D-pad and then select these settings. You can ignore the warnings that are in red and purple. Press A to continue and you will come to this menu. Press A to start installing, and once that's done, you'll be back on this menu. Slot 249 will be green, and that means it's been successfully installed. Now press B to exit. Now that you're back on the homebrew menu, you can simply load the Product Plus USB loader and then start Product Plus from there. If you're curious about the preloader app, you can basically use it to boot up the Wii into any channel that you choose. For example, you can use it to boot up Product Plus as soon as you start the Wii. Or you can have the Wii boot instantly into the homebrew channel. Once this method is complete, you'll be able to load Product Plus or any other Brawl based mod with just a USB and an SD card. In this section, we're going to talk about Dolphin, which means getting Project Plus running on your personal computer, as well as getting ready for online play. This guide is going to cover the Windows version, which is the same process as Mac. If you're using Linux, check this link in the description below. Once you're able to open up Dolphin, you can come back here for the rest of the steps. Since we're not using Wii hardware, we need to go through a few steps to make sure your computer is ready to play Project Plus. In the description, you'll find a link to our text guide here. Go to the Dolphin section and make sure that your system meets the requirements and that you've acquired the appropriate downloads. To check if your Brawl ISO is compatible with online play, you can follow this guide that we've linked in the description. To get started, you will need to go to the Project Plus website or wherever the latest downloads are being hosted. We will keep the most current download in the description here. Download the build and navigate to where the file was downloaded to. Extract the .zip using your preferred method. Run dolphin.exe. Dolphin is mostly configured already, but there are a few steps left. Go to Config, Paths, and then Add. Find the folder that your Brawl ISO is in. You are telling Dolphin where to look for ISO files, not telling Dolphin which ISO files to use. Alternatively, you can place the Brawl ISO file directly in the Games folder here. Brawl should now show up on the main Dolphin window. Right-click on Brawl and select Set as Default ISO. This step is critical for the Project Plus launcher to work properly. You should now be able to boot up Project Plus by either double-clicking on the launcher.elf or by clicking on the launcher and pressing play. For setting up your controller to play on Dolphin, we recommend following this controller setup guide on smashladder.com. Just note that if you want to play with multiple players locally, each controller port needs to be set up appropriately. We recommend using exclusive full screen to reduce input delay. You can enter exclusive full screen by setting a hotkey for full screen in the hotkeys menu. When you start up Project Plus, simply press your hotkey to enter exclusive full screen. Now we're going to talk about getting ready for online play. We recommend running the game offline first to make sure your graphics backend is properly suited for your computer. Performance can vary a lot between backends and is highly dependent on your graphics card. You can tinker with your settings in the graphics menu. Start up the .elf file and make sure you're running at a consistent 60 frames per second without any major stuttering. It's easy to tell if your game is stuttering because you will hear gaps in the game sounds. New builds will experience minor frame drops every so often as elements are loaded for the first time. This should stabilize as a cache is built. We highly recommend using a wired LAN connection. Wi-Fi connections tend to cause stutters and make the game a lot less enjoyable for you and the other player. To play online, press the Netplay button here, which will bring up a Netplay setup window. You can also go to Tools and start Netplay. From here, you can either join another player's lobby or host your own lobby. You can also set your username in this box here. To create your own lobby, click on Host and select the Project Plus launcher and then click Host. 
This is your Netplay Lobby, where you have a few options as the host. To invite other players, copy the lobby code and send it to the other player. There's also an input buffer option at the bottom of the window. Dolphin runs on a delay netcode, meaning your inputs will get delayed as buffer increases. The higher the buffer is, the more time the game has to process inputs from the players, and the game can run without waiting for instructions from each player's computer. To put it simply, you want the buffer high enough so that the game runs smoothly, but low enough so that the game isn't too sluggish. To find that middle ground, take the other player's average ping reading, divide by 8, and round up. You can also just start the game, and raise the buffer until you get a consistent 60 frames per second. Only the host can adjust this minimum buffer. The other buffer setting is your personal input delay, which does not affect the connection. You might want to do this to have a consistent input delay, so that your timings for actions in the game don't change from opponent to opponent. Once the buffer is set up, and the other player is ready, go ahead and start the game. If the other player is hosting, they will send you a code instead. Navigate to the Netplay setup window, paste their code here, and connect to their lobby. Let them know when you're ready and they will start the game. It's possible to have more than two players connected to a lobby at the same time, meaning you can play doubles or free-for-all matches online. Try to make sure that the host is either in the center of the other players geographically, or has the strongest connection. It's also possible to play online when there are multiple players on any given setup. So for example, you and your friend in the room can play on the same computer versus an online opponent. To do this, the host of the Netplay lobby needs to select the Assign Controller Ports option, and then set each player to the corresponding port. So in our earlier example, you would have ports 1 and 2 set to you, and port 3 set to the online player. Keep in mind that you still need your regular controller options set up to accommodate the other local player. To find other players to play Project Plus with, check out smashladder.com or search for the various Netplay Discord servers. Smashladder.com has been the premier way to play Project M and now Project Plus online over the years. All you need to do is go through the process of setting up an account, and be sure to set your location. This helps other players get a rough idea of how much latency there will be before they play with you. While you wait for your account to be linked, be sure to check out the different site guides in order to get up to speed. The Game Finding Guide will teach you the entire matchmaking process. You can also take the time to look over your profile and customize it to your liking. After 10 minutes have passed since the creation of your account, you should now be able to access the Play tab and start playing Project Plus online with your fellow Smashers. With that, we've explained the main methods of installing Project Plus. We also recommend checking out the pinned comment on this video for additional information. If you're experiencing any trouble setting up Project Plus, check out this troubleshooting document that we've linked in the description. You can also ask questions in the support channels on the Project Plus Discord server, which we've also linked in the description. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon! See you later.